I'm going to show you how to make precise jump cuts using a few of iMovie's powerful, often overlooked editing tools. All right, here we are in iMovie. I'm using iMovie version 10.3.2, running on macOS Monterey 12.3.1. And I have an on-camera clip on the timeline. I'll hit the space bar to play it. If you spend any time on my YouTube channel, you know that I do a lot of tutorials on the video creation apps that come bundled with every Mac for free. Things and I'll hit the space bar to stop. There's an awkward pause in my delivery right there. I'm going to fix it using a jump cut. Jump cuts are used in YouTube videos to cut out mistakes or long, awkward pauses like that in an on-camera recording. The goal with jump cuts is to make the dialogue flow as seamlessly as possible. Now, since the dialogue is so important with jump cuts, I'm going to make sure audio waveforms are turned on for my clips. So I'll go over to the top right of the timeline and select the Settings button. In Settings, I'll go down to Audio and make sure Show Waveforms is checked. And waveforms appear on my clips. Waveforms are a visual representation of audio that will help me spot dialogue. I'm also going to turn on Audio Skimming by going up to the top menu and selecting View, and from the drop-down menu, selecting Audio Skimming. You can also turn on Audio Skimming using the keyboard shortcut, Shift-S. With audio skimming on, when I scrub through the timeline with my cursor, I can hear the audio, which also helps me spot dialogue. All right, let's get back and find that edit point. Now, before I start editing, I want to show you a technique that will save you tons of time when it comes to editing these long, sometimes rambling on-camera clips. I'll place the playhead back to the beginning of the clip, hit the space bar to play, then listening carefully to the dialogue, when I hear a flub or an awkward pause, I hit the M key on my keyboard to place a marker at that spot. I'll stop playback for a second. That little purple tab on the clip is a marker, which I can use to quickly reference points in my clip. I'm going to continue placing markers at edit points throughout this entire clip. When I'm done, not only do I have a nice overview of how many edits I need to make, I can quickly scrub to a marker to start editing. I don't have to be constantly scrubbing back and forth through the clip looking for the next edit point. Saves time and wear and tear on the wrist. I'll scrub to the first marker to quickly get to my first edit point. You can see the scrubber snaps to it, which is convenient. If snapping isn't happening for you, make sure you have snapping turned on by hitting the N key on your keyboard. Now, to be more precise with my editing, I'm going to zoom into this spot on the timeline. And I can do that by going over to the top right of the timeline and clicking and dragging on this slider to zoom in and zoom out of the timeline. Now, a faster way to zoom in and out is to use the keyboard shortcuts Command plus to zoom in and Command minus to zoom out. I'm going to zoom in all the way here. And then I'll click on the edit point to place the playhead there. I can use the forward and backward arrow keys on my keyboard to nudge the playhead back and forth one frame at a time to really be precise with the placement. All right, when I find the spot, I'll hit the keyboard shortcut Command B to split the clip at that point. You could right click or control click to bring up the edit menu and select split clip from there, but the keyboard shortcut is faster. Learn as many keyboard shortcuts as possible will save you a ton of time during the editing process. So I've split the clip where I want to make my jump cut at the end of this line of dialogue. Now I need to get rid of this gap in the waveform so I can bump up against this next line of dialogue. Now there's several ways to do this. I could scrub to the beginning of the next line and hit Command B again to split the clip. Then select the part between the two cuts and hit the Delete key to delete the unwanted section, closing the gap, the beauty of the magnetic timeline. I'll hit Command Z or Command Z to bring back the deleted section. Another way to get rid of this gap is by clicking on the right edge of the split and dragging over to just before that next line of dialogue. That works, but let me show you a quicker way to get rid of that gap. 
I'll hit uh, Command Z or Command Z again to undo the trim I just made. I'm going to scrub to the start of the second line of dialogue in the second clip using audio skimming to help me. I'll click to place the playhead at that spot. Then I'll right click or control click on the playhead to bring up the clip menu. And you can see a choice called trim to playhead. That's what I'm going to do. But instead of selecting it from this menu, I'll click off of this menu to close it. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut option forward slash. And the beginning of the clip is trimmed to the playhead location, removing that unwanted section of the clip. All right, let's play back this jump cut. On the video creation apps that come bundled with every Mac. That's pretty good, but let's say I want to adjust this edit a bit more. Well, there are a couple of ways to do that. I can click on the right edge of the outgoing clip or the left edge of the incoming clip to select either side of the edit point. You know it's selected by the appearance of this white vertical bar. You can then drag those bars to adjust the edit point. For more precision, you can select either side of the edit point, then use the period key to nudge the edit point forward one frame at a time, or the comma key to nudge the edit point back one frame at a time. This is frame by frame trimming. Then I can scrub back a bit on the timeline and play through the edit until I'm happy. On the video creation apps that come bundled with air. Now another precise way to adjust your edit is to use the Precision Editor. To bring up the Precision Editor, I can just double click on the edit point I want to adjust, and up pops the Precision Editor interface. Now this top track is the outgoing clip, and this bottom track is the incoming clip. The shaded area of the clips are the parts of the clips that aren't being used in the timeline. I can adjust the in and out points of my edit by clicking and dragging on these white bars, or by clicking and dragging on the clips themselves. Now, if I want to move the edit point altogether, called rolling the edit in editor speak, I click and drag this white rounded rectangle, which represents the edit point, along the timeline. To preview the adjustment, I scrub back along this dark bar between the two tracks, Leave my cursor on the dark bar and then hit the space bar to preview. That I do a lot of tutorials on the video. If you leave your cursor on either of the clips when you preview, you'll be previewing the edit point for each of the individual clips. You'll know that by the red play bar. I have another video that goes into more depth on how to use iMovie's Precision Editor. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. So here's the raw clip before the jump cut. If you spend any time on my YouTube channel, you know that I do a lot of tutorials on the video creation apps that come bundled with every Mac for free. And here's the clip with the jump cut. If you spend any time on my YouTube channel, you know that I do a lot of tutorials on the video creation apps that come bundled with every Mac for free. The key to good jump cuts is to make the dialogue sound as natural as possible. You don't want to have a situation where you have lines of dialogue edited too tightly together. When it comes to jump cuts, you have to think audio first.